This video is brought to you by Panduil.com. Panduil sells thousands of electronics directly from China, including the Lenovo Vibe X2. Please be sure to check them out using the links in the video description. Here in the US, Lenovo has been best known for its superior build quality and design in primarily laptop and desktop computers. Some of their laptops boast value, while others focus on premium construction. Of course, the Lenovo Vive X2 isn't a laptop, but it was designed in a way that places emphasis on looks and overall feel. We'll get to all of that in just a minute. This is my full review of the Lenovo Vibe X2. To start, the Vive X2 is available in gold, white, orange, and red. Panduil does not sell the orange nor red model at the time of filming this video. There's also market-specific models that have frequency bands tailored to that specific area. Each model starts with the base color on the back, and then each layer towards the front is of a darker color. So for example, on my gold unit, you can see how each layer darkens as you look to the front of the device. The back and sides are made of a mix of aluminum and magnesium, which makes the phone not only look premium, but also makes it feel great in the hand. The back cannot be removed obviously, but the phone still provides dual SIM support as well as three prongs on the bottom for an additional battery layer. I'll talk about battery life towards the end of this review. I was a little concerned whether the Vive X2 would be slipper in the hand, and it's not terrible, but you may want to consider using the included case. The sides aren't curved like they are on the HTC One M8 or iPhone 6, so it is easier to grip the phone, but that just wasn't enough for me. I accidentally dropped the device onto concrete and it did suffer some damage. Lenovo did include a case in the box, which I recommend that you use. Otherwise, you just need to be very careful. On a positive note, the back resists both scratches and fingerprints very well. The Lenovo branding on the back has a slightly different story, where it does scratch pretty easily. It's a very minor issue though, so you don't really need to worry about it. Also, since the phone is mostly aluminum, it helps keep the weight down. Speaking of the weight, this phone is really light. Out of the near dozen friends and family members that I had hold this phone, each of them had the same first impression. You'd expect something like this to weigh well over 150 grams, but it's actually just 120 grams. Now, to put that into perspective, that's actually lighter than the 129 gram Apple iPhone 6. It's also nearly as thin as the iPhone 6, measuring 7.27 millimeters compared to the iPhone 6.9 millimeters. Lenovo's Vive X2 may be slightly thicker than the iPhone, but its 13 megapixel camera does not protrude and it's completely flush with the phone, unlike the iPhone 6 camera. Looking around the device, you'll see a noise cancelling microphone near the camera and a speaker grill near the bottom. The micro USB port is on the bottom, next to the primary microphone. The headphone jack is positioned on the top left and the dual SIM tray is right around the corner. The volume rocker and power button are on the right side of the phone and both are positioned nicely. They also have a radial brushed finish, which nicely complements the rest of the design. Coming to the front of the phone, you can see the three capacitive buttons near the bottom and the 5 megapixel front camera on the top. The three capacitive buttons do illuminate, but I did notice that the backlight for these buttons slightly bleeds into the display. It's not as noticeable at higher brightness levels, but looks a bit sloppy in darker environments. I'm not too concerned about this honestly, but just keep in mind that it is there. Call quality on the Vive X2 is average. Some callers did report some minor distortion, but it sounded very clear on my end. Although the Vive X2 is available in a few different frequency variations that work with different regional carriers, I'm going to focus on the model Panduil is selling. Please check with your carrier to confirm compatibility. 3G support is limited to the 900, 1700, and 2100 bands, which means that the Vive X2 will work perfectly with T-Mobile's HSPA Plus network in the United States. Since AT&T uses the 850 and 1900 bands, I was only able to receive 2G edge speeds. That's kind of disappointing, but keep in mind that you're getting T-Mobile support instead. Unfortunately, the 4G LTE support is also limited to FDD LTE bands 3 and 7. These are not used in the United States at all, actually, but they are used in Canada and many other worldwide markets. There's a link in the description to a list of 4G LTE networks by country, so please be sure to check that out if you're interested in using 4G LTE with the Vibe X2. Please press 4. For all other handset please ensure that your SIM card is properly inserted in your Android handset and that you are connected to the internet. It also does have 802.11ac Wi-Fi, so thumbs up for that. 
The 5 inch 1080p display has excellent viewing angles and overall looks great. It is coated with Corning Gorilla Glass 3, which helps the glass resist scratches. It is ultra sensitive, so you can use gloves and pretty much any material with a touchscreen. I did have to disable it though, since it kept activating the touchscreen while the phone was in my pocket. The auto brightness feature is a tad low in my opinion, but Lenovo's Vibe UI does include a slider in the notification tray for manual adjustment. The brightness range is pretty good too, you'll likely find an appropriate level regardless of whether you're in a movie theater or under direct sunlight. The speaker on the Vive X2 sounds good and is reasonably loud. The quality quickly drops when placing the phone on a flat surface, but that's to be expected with this sort of design. You can purchase a detachable speaker if you really want premium audio quality and volume. The 13 megapixel rear camera is good, but not great. The camera itself is okay, but it does have some issues focusing. If you want to take a picture of something moving, you might as well forget about it. However, images of still objects and well-lit scenarios turned out quite well actually. I did download the Google Camera app, and that seemed to improve the image quality dramatically, so I'll leave a link to that in the video description as well. The phone is capable of recording 1080p video. The Lenovo Vive X2 ships with Android 4.4.2 KitKat on board. Lenovo has customized the user interface with their Vive UI 2.0. There's a lot of nice additions, like double tap to wake and a floating app launcher. However, it also has quite a few things that slow it down. The lock screen is very different and the launcher does not include an app drawer. The toggles in the notification shade also feel out of place, and the three security apps that come pre-installed can be a bit overwhelming. Lenovo's Smart Rotation feature attempts to track your eyes, but I found it to be often inaccurate. I do like the recent app switcher, which is very similar to iOS's implementation. Luckily, the issues that I mentioned can be easily resolved. You can download a new lock screen and launcher, disable the security apps, and switch to auto-rotate. I'm not sure whether we'll be seeing an Android 5.0 Lollipop update anytime soon, but I do know that MediaTek will likely be releasing drivers for the MT6595M. Whenever I go to the system update page in the settings app, the settings app just crashes. I'm not exactly sure whether that's a bug, but hopefully this will get sorted out before any updates are released. Under the hood we have a MediaTek MT6595M octa-core chip with ARM's new big little architecture. The processor has four Cortex-A17 cores clocked at 2.0 GHz and another four Cortex-A7 cores clocked at 1.7 GHz. The A17 cores are much more powerful and are used for processor intensive tasks, and the A7 cores use less power and are used for just the opposite. It's also coupled with the PowerVR GR G6200 clocked at 450 MHz. The Vive X2 is a very fast and powerful device. Apps launch very quickly, everything looks smooth, and even the most graphic intensive games play without any problems. It did score 44,418 in Antutu and 1,011 for single core and 3,604 for multi core in Geekbench. These are both really impressive scores and they challenged phones that cost more than twice as much. Gameplay, as you would imagine, was pretty much flawless. <laughs> Although there isn't a microSD card expansion slot on the Vive X2, there is 16GB of internal storage. The model that Panduil is selling is advertised to include 32GB of onboard storage, but the phone only has 16. GPS worked very well on the Vive X2. Since I was only able to get a 2G connection outside of my house, I did use Hear Maps for offline navigation. The lock was quick and GPS was fast to update. The Vive X2 has a 2300mAh built-in battery which isn't really enough to last throughout a full day of normal use. Although your results will vary based on your usage, I found the Vive X2 to last up until 4pm with about 2.5 hours of screen on time. Do keep in mind that this is while I was receiving 2G edge data speeds, 4G LTE or even 3G drains battery much quicker. This is pretty disappointing and it is going to prevent me from using the phone as a daily driver. 
What's most interesting is Lenovo's choice to make the phone extremely thin and sacrifice battery life. I personally cannot understand why they didn't include a larger battery in exchange for a slightly thicker and heavier phone. Instead, they released an optional battery pack. I almost have to assume that Lenovo designed the phone to be very thin and light before considering battery life. The battery pack is designed to double the phone's battery life, but takes the weight over 200 grams and thickness over 12 millimeters. It also isn't the most elegant solution, as it covers the back with plastic instead of aluminum. If you purchase the Lenovo Vive X2 from Panduil, you will receive some documentation from Lenovo, a Panduil quick start guide, a SIM door ejection tool, a hard plastic case, in-ear headphones, a micro USB cable, and an AC adapter. The Vive X2 is a great phone. Its design is something we've never really seen before, let alone for under $300. The performance is incredible and the display is excellent. However, its software still feels a little bit overwhelming compared to stock Android, and the battery life is going to be a deal breaker for many people. If you're looking for a very powerful phone with an excellent design, the Vive X2 is a great choice. If you can deal with the minor software quirks and are willing to charge the phone more than once per day, the Vive X2 is the perfect match. However, if battery life is still more important than design and overall look and feel, you're going to want to consider a slightly more expensive phone like the OnePlus One or Xiaomi Mi 4. If you are interested in the Lenovo Vivex 2, please visit the links in the description to view it on Panduel. Let me know in the comments below whether you'd be willing to sacrifice battery life for a thinner phone. Also, if you found this review informative or helpful in any way, please give the video a thumbs up. That is going to be all for this video. Thank you for watching and please be sure to subscribe.